I've talked about the importance of setting up more complicated and dynamic streams for years. But how do you keep up with all of it? Sources, scenes, files, alerts, what's do? Today's video is a mini masterclass in organizing your stuff in OBS Studio. Let's get it. I'm Vox, the stream professor, and I've made hundreds and hundreds of videos on OBS Studio and using it to maximize your streaming career. Hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay informed. We're going to kick this off with OBS specific organization tips first, and then we'll get to talk about organizing your actual files later, as I'm sure most of you are expecting to talk about OBS, even if your actual files are just as important. First, scene collections and profiles. Not sure what these are? Well, then you probably need to plan a watch session through my OBS Masterclass. But to break it down, scenes are groups of sources together for a specific view, and scene collections are your groups of scenes. Your scenes would be your be right back, starting soon, and just chatting screens, your gameplay face cam scene, teaching scene, interview scene, etc. that are grouped together in a scene collection for specific production purposes. Perhaps these are grouped by shows. I have different scene collections for my stream theory and streamer news shows or by platform with separate collections for Twitch and YouTube streams and so on. Profiles are your individual settings in the settings menu. Stream locations, output locations, encoder settings, bit rates, color spaces, all of that. If you switch to your Twitch scene collection but have your YouTube profile active, your stream is not going to Twitch. While it can be annoying to have to juggle these separately, you can make it much easier on yourself by keeping them organized and labeled properly. I generally stick to labeling my scene collections and profiles to the same matching name if they're intended to go together. But if I upgrade one without the other, I note that in the change as well. For example, my streamer news profile has remained unchanged basically since 2019, while I have moved on to Streamer News Season 2 for scene collections with a whole new set of graphics and layouts and things like that. Another recommendation if you have a lot of different profiles and scene collections is to start their name by platform as prefixes, such as Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Glimish, Local, etc. Whatever strategy makes them easier to find at a quick glance, just make sure they match. Next, let's talk about your individual scenes. Unfortunately, these are a little bit more limited than sources in terms of customization, though the OBS team is working to change that and make it better soon. But there's still stuff we can do to stay organized. First and foremost, the order of your scenes can make a huge difference on your ability to navigate through them quickly and effectively. Keep the scenes you'll be regularly, like actually using and switching between at the top of your scenes list. These are your active scenes. If you don't sort this by the bare minimum way, you'll have to keep scrolling to find the scene that you want to switch to, and it's a nightmare. To go a step beyond that, you can create dividers to keep your type of scenes separate. What do I mean by types of scenes? Well, in my layouts, I have camera focus scenes, screen or gameplay focus scenes, and title slide scenes, such as be right back and starting soon scenes. But beyond that, I also have a gamut of scenes that are nested within other scenes, such as for my webcams, my music, etc. I leverage these with different layouts and settings and have them on their own scenes. That way I can apply a change and it affects all scenes that they are added to to keep things organized. You can set up dividers by using a blank scene with a long title with dashes or stars around the text to clearly keep these scenes organized, moving them in the list with the up and down arrows. Keep in mind, actively use scenes up top. So I tend to have my most used scenes, my face play and gameplay splits as my first section, status slides as my second, and nests as my third section. You can also use prefixes to indicate what a scene is, so something like SE for screen elements, SS for status slides, GP for gameplay, whatever works for you. These not only get labeled with the dividers, but also get added to the start of every scene label to make more clearly keep these grouped together and help you find them when you're scrolling and separated from one another. You know what a good source to add to your stream is? Our awesome rock and metal music from Backing Track. All the music is royalty free, stream safe, DMCA free, and available for you to use in your videos, your live streams, your podcasts, your TikToks, your Insta snaps, and we even have and provide stems for you to remix and build your own versions of the songs to your heart's content. Check it out at backingtrack.gg or get the free downloads over on our Discord server at discord.gg slash Sources are where we really get to have fun. Unlike scenes, sources can't always be sorted just by any sort of priority order, as the order of your sources affects the actual layering on your OBS canvas. That, that, that would be a problem. That has to take focus in order for your layout to work. Thankfully, we have a lot more control over what sources look like in the list. 
First, there's colors. Right click a source name in the sources list and you can assign a color from the list of colors or choose a custom color. This changes the entire row bar background of that source to be a color. Great for easily identifying different kinds of sources such as images, alerts, video devices, etc. Next, there are groups. If you have a bunch of images or sources that create a specific layout, you can actually group them into one basically subsource, a group of sources, to move or resize all at once and collapse the group in the sources list so they don't eat up space. If you regularly use this kind of group across multiple scenes, it's probably worth turning them into their own scene and nesting that scene as a source in other scenes instead of keeping and trying to copy the groups to other scenes and keeping those in sync. If you edit that one scene that has that group on it, then that affects all of your other scenes that you add that nested scene to. I know that gets really redundant sounding. A secret killer customization tip for scene names is you can also use HTML formatting to change the text. Bold, italics, underlines, headers, superscript, subscript, alignment, and even colored or rainbow text. The possibilities are endless. I have some resources linked below on HTML text customization because this can help a lot for making different, you know, specific sources stand out. I know it can seem not fun to spend a bunch of time changing this kind of thing, which no one even sees in your actual content, but streamlining your workflow is hugely important and should not be overlooked. Plus, less time fumbling with scenes, skipping to the wrong scene, etc. helps make you seem that much more professional when you're streaming and that you actually know what you're doing. I say this as the guy who teaches live streams and still fumbles with my scenes during my shows as well. Viewers of my live shows know exactly what I'm talking about. I think it works this time. I think. Did y'all hear it? <laughs> this is only episode two. I honestly haven't had a ton of... Lastly, please don't forget to sort your actual stream files, your resource files. Seriously. It seems easy enough to just drag a video or image onto OBS and forget about where it's actually stored, but keeping your files organized is hugely important. You know what else is hugely important? Our merch over at eposvox.gg slash merch. You can get high quality, classic, you know, 90s blank VHS style desk mats, pins, and stickers. The enamel pins are incredible, and you can stick them on just about anything, cover your desk, get a nice high quality desk mat for your mouse. It's really awesome stuff, and it comes with a free trial to my own streaming service, Nebula, as well. This is a limited run. We will be running out before too long, so make sure you get in there, eposvox.gg slash merch, and pick up yours today. Going back to files, I recommend making master folders either by show type or file type. Lower thirds, transitions, backgrounds, etc. And then you can sort from there. This is crucially important for keeping everything together, backing up your files, moving your layouts to new installations, and restoring it if your computer crashes. Personally, I have general graphics folders that I use for both streams and videos that are sorted by graphic type, so transitions, lower thirds, that kind of thing, and then show specific files sorted by show name then type from there. As an example for stream theory, where I have consistent graphics for the overall show, but also have per episode visuals, so I have that sorted that way. So then I have a stream theory folder, then assets with some additional sorting in there, but also episodes with the episode numbers and specific media for those specific or particular episodes. So that way everything's you know, sorted, and then once an episode's done, I can usually just scrap those graphics without affecting the main show's visuals. You can keep your backups on a NAS or network storage, but for latency purposes, it's recommended to keep media sources on a local storage drive, probably an SSD. Keeping them organized this way helps keep that in sync as well. As a quick tip, newer OBS versions have a missing files dialog. This means if a file goes missing to where OBS expects it to be, whenever you launch OBS, it'll pop up a window asking you to find it. This means that you can close OBS, sort all of your sources, you know, your stream files into different subfolders and things like that, and then relaunch OBS and point it to your newly sorted folders, and it'll reconnect everything. Easy peasy. One final general tip, if you want to experiment with new settings or graphics, make a duplicate of your scene collection or profile for that testing purpose and then test on that one. Don't test on the one that you normally stream with because if you mess something up, it'll be a pain in the butt to restore it or you'll go to stream and it's gone. Alternatively, download the portable build of OBS Studio and run that in an entirely separate OBS sandbox for testing as well. I actually use two OBS installations and I'm working on breaking that out to more. Currently, I have one for my main recordings and streams and one to run all the wacky tests I do for videos. Like I said, I know this isn't flashy or exciting to talk about or work on, but spending some time once a week or every few weeks or just on your off days to organize your files and clean up your scenes and your collections and your profiles can really help to make your life a lot easier 
and make your streams run a lot smoother. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this other one about awesome OBS scripts that can really let you do some on-screen magic and some cool stuff for your streams. Scripting is super powerful. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Join us on Discord, discord.gg slash and remember, be kind, rewind.